So we've seen we have the dot product, which takes two vectors and turns them into a scalar. We're going to look at the cross product now, which takes two vectors and turns them into another vector. Now this works for vectors in R3, so the formula is, is specially for vectors in R3. So the definition of the cross product is if you have two vectors u and v, then you combine their entries according to this formula, and that gives you a new vector called u cross v. So let's just work an example here. So I've got these two vectors, u and v. Let's find u cross v just by using this formula. Now, in just a second, I'll show you a faster way or a quick way to remember what the formula should be. But if we just follow the formula, let's see what we get. First, it says u2 v3. So that would be 3 times 4. That's 12 minus u3 v2. u3 is negative 1. v2 is negative 3. So that product is 3. So we have 12 minus 3. OK, now the next entry. Um, u3 v1, so negative 1 times 5 would be negative 5, minus u1 v3, 2 times 4 is 8, so negative 5 minus 8. And then the last entry is going to be u1 v2, so 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, um, minus u2 v1, 3 times 5 is 15, so negative 6 minus 15. So we put that together, 12 minus 3 is 9, negative 5 minus 8 is negative 13, and negative 6 minus 15 is negative 21. Now it turns out that this vector that you get has some special properties. One of them is that it should be perpendicular to the two original vectors, u and v, which means if you take the dot product of this with either one of these, you should get 0. And that gives us a nice way to kind of catch errors, so we can check and make sure that the vector we got is actually perpendicular. So I'm going to do u dot u cross v here. So that would be to take 2, 3, negative 1 and dot it with what I think the answer is. If I've made a little arithmetic mistake, uh, then chances are this won't be 0, and so I can go back and check my work. 2 times 9 is 18. 3 times negative 13 is negative 39. And negative 1 times negative 21 is 21. So let's see, 18 and 21 would be 39, and minus 39 makes 0. So yes, that checked out. And we should check the other one too. This will just help us catch it if we've made a mistake. So if I do v now, which was 5, negative 3, 4, with what I think the answer is, 9, negative 13, negative 21. 5 times 9 is 45. Negative 3 times negative 13 is 39. And 4 times, 4 times negative 21, let's see, 4 times 20 would be negative 80, so negative 84. And let's see, if I borrow one from this, that's 44 plus 40, that's positive 84. Minus 84 gives me, yep, 0. So now I feel pretty confident. If I had made a, a math mistake, then probably one of these dot products wouldn't have turned out to be 0, and I would have, I would have known to check my work. So I feel pretty confident that this is the correct answer. Now. Um, I said I would show you a nicer formula, or kind of a, a fast way of computing the dot product, or of, or of computing the cross product, or of remembering the formula. So let's look at it here. If you, if you look at the formula for u cross v, you might look might look at these little entries. They look like little two by two determinants. Okay, and so you can remember the formula by doing sort of a special cross product. If you need to do u cross v, what you can do is you can, you can take the determinant of this matrix. First, along the top row, insert the standard unit vectors. Now that's kind of weird to put a vector into this, but it's just a way of remembering what the formula should be. Then put in the first vector in the cross product, and then put in the second vector in the cross product. So we have u1, u2, u3 in the second row, and v1, v2, v3 in the third row because u came first and then came v. So we just insert these little things, just think of them as symbols. And then remember our, um, our cross product formula. We're going to expand along this top row, and that's going to give us the i, j, and k entries. Remember, I, remember the checkerboard pattern. i is in a plus position, j is in a minus position, and k is in a plus position. So if we go through this, now what we're going to get is i times this 2 by 2 right determinant, which is u2 v3 minus u3 
v2, and then minus j, minus j times this determinant. Let's see, u1 v3 minus u3 v1, u1 v3 minus u3 v1, and then plus k times u1 v2 minus u2 v1. Okay, so you can notice that the i entry doesn't involve any of the first components, right? Because to do that determinant, you cross them out. So you only have twos and threes, right? And they're crossed up. Those are little determinants. Notice this is the right thing because it says the first entry is u2 v3 minus u3 v2. And then the second entry, oh, that looks different. But remember, because j was in a negative position, there's a negative here that needs to go through. So if I distribute that negative, I get plus u3 v1 minus u1 v3, and then finally the k term, u1 v2 minus u2 v1. So let's see how you'd use that. Suppose that we had, again, our vectors um, u equals um, 2, 3, negative 1, and v equals 5, negative 3, and 4. Then to find u cross v, I'm just going to do the determinant of this matrix, i, j, and k, and then 2, 3, negative 1, and 5, negative 3, 4. So we get for i, 12 minus 3 would be 9. For j, we have to remember that's in a negative position, we have 8 minus minus 5. 8 plus 5 is 13, but j is in a negative position, so that's negative 13. And k, we have negative 6 minus 15. That's negative 21. So we got the same answer as before by using um, this determinant formula.